no one would want to do that shoot because it's just you're gonna wreck a car someone's gonna get hurt I think one of the most outrageous shoots I've ever been on uh, of the past 12 years of doing this was shooting with Chris uh, with the McLaren P1 at Yas Marina. This was at the time where we knew Drive was up for sale. We didn't know exactly where this particular segment was going to live, whether it was going to be for Drive or was it going to be for something else I was working at the time. It was right about the time when it was decided amongst my team and my company that we were going to be producing Apex, the first hypercar film. And that Yas Marina shoot was actually the first thing ever shot for the film and it really defined the attitude for the rest of the shoots and the rest of the, the documentary. We knew that there was something going on with Koenigsegg. We knew, we knew we had access to all these different manufacturers to tell the story of the hypercar. But with McLaren and the P1, it was a little bit on edge and a little bit outrageous. That P1 event was a typical journalist press drive in the sense of journalists get flown in they get to drive the car, and then they go home and they write or talk about their impressions of the car. The difference is, is that there's only one McLaren P1 press car, and there were only, I think, five or six journalists that were invited to, drive, to actually drive it. And we were actually shooting at Yas Marina. The only time McLaren had access to the track was 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. for the five journalists to drive it. The other side of the story that's never fully told is that the same time that we were shooting with the P1, Top Gear with Richard Hammond was driving the 918 on the track on the opposite side of the other paddock. So it was actually one of the first times you had a Porsche 918 and a McLaren P1 in the same place at the same time. Remember, this is right when those cars came out, right? Right at the beginning, before, before you know, all the cars were produced or whatever it may be, they, they, those were the first cars. When it got time for us to shoot that segment for you know what ended up being for for Chris Harris on cars as well as for Apex we found that we only had about 30 minutes to shoot it 30 minutes and the other part of the equation is that there's only two shooters myself and Neil Carey we initially thought we would have a lot more time and we could do a lot more but 30 minutes is all we got and that was 30 minutes including Chris driving the car and learning about it so in reality, it was more like ooh, 20, 20, maybe 15 minutes. Neil and I came up with a plan of how we were actually going to shoot this. So Chris went out, he did his initial impressions, his initial laps, and then uh, it was like three or four laps. I think lap three, he said, okay, I'm just going to slide the car every, every corner I can, I can do it, just to get as much content as possible. Now, Chris has been sliding cars for you know, 20, 30 years, right? He's very good at his job. And he's not, let's, by no means of the, he's not a professional driver in the sense of he's not going to go out and win the Nürburgring 24 or Le Mans. But at the same time, when it comes to drivers who end up at the pat in the paddock for the 24 hours of Nürburgring, he's one of the best. But more so than anything else, Chris can slide a car to, to the exact measurements you need as a shooter. He's not just sliding the car uh, because he wants to slide the car. He's sliding the car so it looks good on camera. And that's what makes the difference for why his shows were so successful versus just anyone kind of going out and sliding cars. He's actually thinking as a director as to if I slide the car in this direction at this point and the camera's there and with the light there and the way the car tracks out, he's thinking about all those different variables. And for us as shooters, we're thinking about it in the same light as he is in making sure that we're getting the best shot, but we're also thinking as drivers because everyone that's kind of on our team enjoys driving of some regard. We know how cars move on track, right? And we, we want to make sure that he's in a safe spot so he's not going to wreck a car and also in the sense of like make it look authentic to the viewer, right? If you kind of shoot a car in a way that doesn't make it look like it's like it's dynamic enough or it looks like a shitty slide, it's not going to sell to the audience. So we're, we're all kind of thinking together as directors, as camera people, as, as Chris, you know, he's thinking of all those variables, plus he's trying to slide a multi-million dollar car that he can't put into a wall. And we're under this time constraint. And all those variables put together, if you put, if put all those variables together a week before the shoot, no, no one would want to do that shoot because it's just, you're going to wreck a car or someone's going to get hurt. But for some reason that night, like, and it's still, I look back as one of the, one of the most successful shoots we've ever had, where we just were all in tune. We knew we had, we had a great opportunity. 
Yas Marina to ourselves for 30 minutes. Not a lot of time, but still, it's our track for 30 minutes. And we've got a McLaren P1. And we know we're looking around at all the other journalists and who the other shooters are. Like in Formula One or IMSA, like you're looking at your competition, and you're like, okay, we got this. We can, we, we're gonna pull off that perfect lap. We're gonna, we're gonna pull off that perfect shoot. And we knew it. We knew we, we could get this done. And Neil and I were, were adamant that this was gonna be one of, was, this, we could pull off something special. The time constraint was the hardest part. 15 minutes to really get all your shots. So we took it upon ourselves to basically run to every single corner to set up our shots. Mind you, um, Yas Marina has never seen two cameramen running on track with a car hot, uh, and that's totally not allowed. But we basically realized that by the time they figure out what we're doing, uh, it's gonna be too late and we're already gonna have our shots. So five corners before the hotel, we're like, okay, we could get this done. We can get this done in 15 minutes. So basically we set up, we're on the radio with Chris, and you don't need a radio because you hear him on the other side of the track, you know where he is. We're running on the track. We're obviously in safe spots, but not necessarily in spots that Yas Marina staff would want us to be, the marshals would not want us to be. Uh, setting up cameras, running away if it's an impact zone so that like we're safe, but if the camera gets hit, so be it. Setting up shots, and as soon as Chris would go by, immediately gr grab cameras, sometimes not hitting the record button, so we're still re recording as we're running down the track. We sprint to the next corner, set up, repeat. And by the time we got to the next corner, Chris had already completed the next lap. Done, done, done. Before we know it, we're under the hotel. Uh, we're getting those final slides and final drifts under the hotel. And at this point, the staff knows what's going on. And they're already driving up behind the fence barriers, yelling at us as we're getting our last shots. And then that last shot coming underneath, where I was standing on like a safety barrier or something, and the camera was, camera was like right at the track out point. It's an awesome shot, good wide shot with the hotel and Chris drifting by. Just as Chris goes by, you can kind of hear it in the audio, there's a marshal behind me maybe five or six feet away just screaming at me. Neil and I both look at each other like, yep, all right, I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, and we pulled, it, we pulled that shoot off in, in about 30 minutes, and little did we know this is the best part about it. Little did we know that we, we, got, we went back, we looked at all the footage. Chris had actually linked seven corners together perfectly, sliding-wise, drifting-wise, no mess-ups. And Chris makes mistakes, but he knows at a point where if he's going to mess up, he's, he knows where he's going to mess up and where he can kind of you know, put the car in a position where it's not going to damage anything. And Chris does mess up, and, but little did we know that he was sliding that car every corner and he nailed every single time. And we nailed every single shot. And it was one of those shoots, it was like, it's never gonna get more perfect than that in those circumstances like that. One of the best shoots we've ever had.